On the breakfast this morning, ahead of the 2023 general election, as the political gladiators have taken the center stage, citizens must therefore understand ideas about citizenship, politics, and government. We look at the role of Nigerians ahead of the general elections. Also on the breakfast, we look at a call by the Lagos State Government through the Ministry of Agriculture and the Lagos State Agricultural Development Authority to embrace the urban farming method as one of the ways to attain food sufficiency in the state. How viable is urban farming in Lagos State as a matter of fact? And don't forget, we'll also dive into the pages of the nation's newspapers, taking you through the headlines and analysis from our guests. Welcome, you're watching The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels. It's a brand new day on Monday, and we're set for a week of engaging and interesting conversations right here on Plus TV Africa. Once again, you're welcome. Now let's get the ball rolling with a look at um, some trending stories across Nigeria. Of course, um, lots of conversations going on online. Um, Nigerians airing their views on several issues that um, concern them. One in particular, the God people talking and uh, elicited a lot of a conversation and reaction was the fact that the uh, news broke uh, that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had detained the Director General of the uh, uh, Voice of Nigeria, which is um, an organization that you don't hear a lot of these days. And But ever since this current Director General came on board, uh, the Voice of Nigeria has been in the news a lot. And um, what got a lot of people, um, uh, you know, noticing the Voice of Nigeria some more it was the fact that uh, the Director General, Osita Okechuku, um, has been vocal, vocal on, on um, national issues, vocal on political issues, you know, drumming support for President Buhari. Um, it, it almost has amounted to a campaign. And um, some people, especially people who are knowledgeable about how the media um, functions, have um, raised an eyelid. But um, what got people talking was the fact that this gentleman, Osita Okechuku, the DG, of the Voice of Nigeria um, had been detained or was reportedly detained by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. He was said to have arrived at the EFCC headquarters in Abuja at about 1.30 p.m. on Saturday following uh, what we heard was an invitation regarding a case of alleged conspiracy, uh, abuse of office and misappropriation of public funds. Um, he is said to have been uh, have undergone questions for allegedly allegedly embezzling 1.3 billion naira. And don't forget these are allegations, but people couldn't stop talking about about the man and his records and the fact that he's been really vocal. You know, um, as at the time we we last checked yesterday, he was in EFC's custody. But when the spokesman for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Wilson, Wilson Wajeren, was uh, contacted. Uh, he confirmed that Osita Okechuku, the Vaughn DG, was invited by the commission, but he didn't give too much away. You know, he declined to comment further, you know, on why he was invited. And meanwhile, um, like we said earlier, he's been relatively outspoken, you know, commenting on on several issues. See, once recently, I think November 2021, he had uh, called on the federal government uh, or supported President Buhari's um, um, statement that he was prepared to consider a political solution and probably indicating the government might um, release an Amdi Kano. And he addressed the press saying, yes, I support what the president has said. You know, um, Mr. President, you're in the right, um, you're on, on the right path. Um, Inam Dikano will be released and calling on IPOB to support the emergence of uh, an Igbo president in 2023. So, um, Osita Okechuka has been outspoken, really. Um, I don't remember any, any uh, uh, government official who is superintending over a media organization for the government that really has spoken out like this, you know, in the times past. Maybe the one I can remember would be Raymond Dokpesi, but Raymond Dokpesi is not actively overseeing his organization. He just owns the place, you know. So um, it's, it's quite interesting to see. Um, well, some people have pointed out the fact that Osita um, 
Okay, Chukwe is a government. Hey, he's been, you know, supporting Mr. President and, you know, saying good things about him and promoting the president and the government actively, you know, even going after the president's um, enemies. But um, this is sort of a surprise to a lot of people that he's been invited. It may be the supporters of the president can say that, you know, you can look at this to see that the president um, and the government and the EFCC uh, does not have any sacred cows. This could be a pointer, some of the president's supporters are saying, you know, that there are no separate cows as far as the administration is concerned. And those who are always saying that, um, oh, if you join the APC, your sins will be forgiven. You should look at what is happening to this man. Well, it's an allegation for now. We don't know much about it because the EFC hasn't given a lot out. And we'll keep watching this space and the conversation is going on and I'll probably bring you some details as time goes on. Another one um, that caught our attention over the weekend, uh, and it's still trending today. Rituals, rituals, in particular, money rituals amongst uh, young Nigerians. Um, you know, it was a hectic conversation online. Lots of people chipping in. Uh, lots of people uh, having their say as far as money rituals are concerned. You know, young people going out and engaging the services of Babalaos, Malams, Alphas, you know, and other people, basically native doctors, to get them powers, spiritual powers, to make money. In particular, the fingers were being pointed out what we know in Nigeria as Yahoo Yahoo Boys or Internet Fosters that they have been using, you know, native powers, um, juju as it's called, or, or voodoo, to enhance their ability to defraud people. And uh, that gave rise to the, the term Yahoo Plus in Nigeria. You know, so uh, there's a particular gentleman who shared his story, and I just want to go to that very quickly um, to say that, um, you know, something happened, and, and this was it's quite interesting. Let me just blow it up. It says, my mother asked me to kill my brother for money rituals, uh, suspected Yahoo boy confesses. This is a 32-year-old man uh, who was arrested by operatives of the Lagos State Police Command, confessing that his mother encouraged him to kill his younger brother for money rituals. So lives are being taken. Lives are being taken. Um, the suspected internet froster made shocking the shocking confession after he was arrested by the police during a, a stop and search raid uh, operation, rather in the Kurdu Lagos. Um, and we have a lot of other people chipping in online. For instance, um, DJ Switch, who uh, became more popular over the NSA's uh, protests and uh, uh, what we now call the massacre, uh, she put out a tweet. She says, um, "What we have a lot of work to do." especially what type of content we produce. So the content of the comedians and the movie makers and the skit makers online now coming into the discussion to say, oh, we need to look at what message you're passing to the young people based on the skits and the movies that we put out, the comedy clips that we put out and all that. But it's up who are asking, you saying, okay, when DJ Switch is talking about the the content we're putting out in terms of the dramas, the sketches and the skits and the movies online in the cinemas, you know, and, and everywhere. And um, are these, is this what is setting the agenda for the young people? Is this what is showing them what to do? Or are these skit makers, are these content makers simply mirroring, simply reflecting and acting out what they're seeing in society? Is it the content makers who produce the Yahoo Boys? Is it content makers who produce the Yahoo Plus? In the ritualist. So that's the debate that has been going on. But DJ Switch said, um, we have to a lot of work to do, especially what type of content we produce, if the trajectory of our young ones now uh, is how to do rituals, TikTok chiding here and there, so so clap back, then we are in deep, I won't use the word she wants, to, but in deep problem, let me put it that way. It's a lot of conversation going, you know, up online. Um, also, Nigerian musician, Timaya. He said, I'll put up a comment as well, maybe trying to promote his song and all that. But he said, quote, 17 year old boy doing ritual, innocent humans killed for money. Even your own homeboy can use you. Watch out, guys. It's really cold outside. Oh, my. That's uh, something that it paused, put up. A lot of people shared it. They put a screen grab up and all that. Um, and then the conversation now moved on to, you know, Nigerian youth who, um, say they are, who are hardworking, sharing their craft online, sharing what they do online to say, hey, whilst other people are, are doing rituals for money, youngsters are engaging in rituals for money, I, as a young Nigerian, I'm a hardworking person and look at what I'm doing 
you know, so people who are engaging in cooking, those who are engaging in uh, other crafts, you know, making shoes, those who are engaged in solar um, electrification and all that, we're sharing um, the craft online to say, I'm working hard. And I think my fellow youth should also work hard as well. Um, uh, Ju Onlo, for instance, he's a Twitter user. He put up pictures of, he says, I don't do ritual. I power people's house, office, and farms 247. You too can be free from the unpredictable power, uh, generate electricity, solar installation. He was just trying to sell himself. So, you know, a lot of conversations going online. People now also trying to see, uh, let's have a conversation around why are we having these money rituals, you know? And someone said that, for instance, uh, two things money rituals will give you the peace you desire, the wealth um, you always dreamt of. So, We've got to see the conversation moving from people saying, oh, this guy did this and this guy did that, to people saying, um, Nigerians commenting online saying, uh, we need not do this because if you go down this lane, your life will not end well. And then people you know, promoting what they're doing, selling what they're doing and saying, this is what I do for a living. I don't engage in money rituals. It's, um, it's a very interesting conversation. And of course, um, uh, you know, ways to tackle the problem need to be explored, you know, to hear that youngsters are, uh, going on ritual assignments, you have to kill someone, you know, to make money. It's 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 really really worrying. Another part of the conversation was, you know, centered on the online, centered on the 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 moral fabric of society and how degraded the morals in society have become. Um, some were talking about how be in the in the in years past in nigeria the whole community was engaged in raising children the whole community was engaged in raising uh, the, the child it wasn't just down to the family and saying what have we done where did we lose it where did we drop the ball as far as uh, maintaining the standards in society are concerned and raising our children some are also looking at the role of parents and the fact that parenting today is not what it used to be some years ago maybe parents are to blame and of course as far as it is as long as, as long as usual with every conversation in Nigeria, the government was not left out from the blame game. You know, some said government needs to get back to, you know, setting the moral standards of society and the politicians themselves are not showing a good example because now we have our value centered around money, our value centered around material things, our value centered around ostentatious living, and um, some people started blaming the politicians. You know, in every conversation, <laughs> as far as we're concerned in this country, the politicians would have to get something at the end of the day. Even Despot Elliot was not left out. So that was a, quite an interesting one. Another story that got uh, people talking in as far as the trending issues in Nigeria are concerned uh, was a small matter of um, the embattled policeman, um, Abakari, the one who uh, is being investigated by a panel set up by the Police Service Commission. Um, of course, with his relationship, over his relationship with um, Hush Puppy, who was arrested in Dubai and transferred to the United States of America. Um, of course, Abakari was described as a super cop in times past, um, and a lot of people were shocked uh, to see that he had a relationship with someone who was who is being convicted and tried uh, for fraud, internet fraud. Um, Abba Kari was spotted online along with some Nigerian celebrities like Kubi Kubana. Um, he is a former head of the Nigerian Police Forces Intelligence Response Team. Um, he was seen with Obi Kubana and other guests attending the wedding ceremony of Mena Alkali. Now, Mina Alkali is a son of incumbent Inspector General of Police Alkali Baba. It's Abakari, you know, has he been, 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 been um, stopped from going anywhere in Nigeria? Of course not. Uh, but the fact that, you know, he's still moving around and posting stuff around, some Nigerians didn't understand it. The wedding ceremony took place um, at the palace of the Shehu of Bornu, Abubakar El Kanemi, in Meduguri, the capital of Bornu State. It also had an attendance, governors and, you know, movers and shakers. The governor of Yobe State was there. The governor of Jigawa State was there. That's Mai Malabuni uh, was there as well. We had several several guests, like the Senate president. Um, because of his association with Hush Puppy, or formerly known as Ramon Abbas, um, and his subsequent indictment by the United States of America's FBI, that's the Federal Bureau of Investigation, a carry was suspended from office. 
last week he talked about the fact that the, in, the report on the investigation into his um, relationship with uh, Hushrepi was submitted. And the Police Service Commission rejected that report, saying it was not thorough enough and had to ask an order for another report. So Nigerians say a lot of things, you know, look at him again. Um, he is still putting stuff up um, and all that and, and calling Abakari out. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, DCP Abakari went online um, to put up his posts. We hear he put up so many pictures about this particular uh, trip. And it seems the man doesn't know um, how to lie low. <laughs> you know, in, in times like this when you, you're not really popular in the public, you know, I and people are baying for blood as far as police the police are concerned and you, know, you look at yahoo boys also um in the spotlight again maybe it's 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 not a bad idea to lie low maybe it's not a bad idea to just go in quietly do your thing and go out but no uh Abakari could not do that he still had to go online had to go on facebook and put some pictures up we hear he has deleted the pictures uh, right now and um that's where the story stands so um uh, a last look at the, his page uh, his facebook page where he put up over four hundred pictures can you beat that over 400 pictures um the last uh a visit to his page indicated that only the pictures of the uh, igp son's wedding were left you know um the others had been deleted and that's where we stand so it's quite interesting uh, people are finding it hard to forgive <laughs> forgive abakari you know raining all sorts of words on him online uh, because he decided to go out. But this is Nigeria, and uh, if, you have, if you have to take a step, you have to think about it. If you have an issue um, that has not put you in the right, right um, frame in the public eye, then you should probably, you know, lie low and probably just take a step back and not go around putting pictures up so that people will not start, you know, looking at you again till your issue goes away. Um, Nigerians are waiting for that report from the Police Service Commission to be concluded and to see what the next step will be as far as the uh, prosecution of this man is concerned. Incontrovertible evidence, of course, you know, shared by the Federal Bureau of Investigations. And some Nigerians feel, um, would, are asking rather, would, would Abakari be another sacred cow as far as his investigation is concerned? Um, is he supposed to be free right now? Should, be, should he be cooling his heels in jail? Um, so people are asking these questions and they're watching and they're waiting for that report to be submitted to see what the government will do. Some have said, oh, uh, the federal government is going to protect him. Um, he's in the good books of the government. He's a policeman. He's a northerner. People are asking these questions. So the earlier the Police Service Commission can complete its work and the report will be submitted, thorough one, um, will be submitted the better. But for now, it's advised or it's advisable that Abakari lie low and live his life in quiet and peace and not attract attention to his affairs. Well, those are the trending stories that we've been watching and following at this time right here on Plus TV Africa. Um, up next, we have Opunabo Inkotaria standing by as we're going to delve into the pages of the National Dailies with his analysis of those big stories. Stay with us. It's still breakfast.